Hey, I'm Big Pop here with your Raw Recap for May 6, 2013. We're going to open up the show with John Cena, who's a little too injured to wrestle, and we'll figure that out by the end of the uh, the program, uh, what he actually does bring to this program today. Um, at the beginning, he steals Daniel Bryan's gimmick by getting the crowd to go, yes, no, blah, blah, blah. Um, God damn, he is corny. Um, he's so corny, um, I actually used a thesaurus to look up the word corny to find other words to describe John Cena. He's uh, trite, cliched, banal, commonplace, dull, feeble, hackneyed, mawkish, melodramatic, old hat, which is funny because he wears a hat, old-fashioned, sentimental, shop-worn, stale, stereotyped, sound familiar? Yeah, John Cena. Stupid, tired, and warmed over. The opposite, or the antonym, uh, would be new, original, or unique. Um, yeah, that's not John Cena. As a matter of fact, it was funny because I looked up uh, the word corny in the thesaurus and John Cena's picture was there. That was kind of dull and corny, too. Vicky comes out to interrupt, and it was just Vicky, not Bricky, so uh, without the BR, it's just icky. Sorry, Brad Maddox. Right back, you suck too. They did make the stipulation for Extreme Rules as a last man standing match. The audience is funny because there's a guy behind Jerry Lawler while he's doing his little uh, spiel that just kept yelling, Jerry! Jerry Lawler! Jerry the King Lawler! To try to get them to turn around, but they did that with a lot of the people on the sidelines tonight. The first match, RKO versus Damian Sandow. This is a rematch from SmackDown, and I actually did like the match on SmackDown. Um, Sandow seemed a little bit off. Um, yes, he was more aggressive, but he just wasn't as sharp tonight. I don't know why. St. Louis is extreme rules. He's going to be wrestling the big show, clearly, so maybe Orton will come out of his shell and stop being as corny, dull, trite, and commonplace as he has been. Who knows? This show is scraping along slowly, like an old man's balls at the beach. The RKO moveset, two and a half stars, guys. That's the match. It wasn't a great match to start off, but, you know, it was already 8.30 before we saw the first wrestling match on Raw tonight. The second match, Fandango versus R-Truth. R-Truth wins with a countout. Jericho came back. He decides to do sort of a Dancing with the Stars judges table and brings out guys that know how to kick people's butts and guys that know how to dance as well. So, Clearly, tons of funk come out. God almighty, the references are getting so old. They, they keep bringing up Chuck Barris, who hosted the Gong Show in the 70s, and Dolly Parton, who was big in the 70s. Well, Dolly Parton's always big. But no, but the same point, dude. I mean, you know, I'm kind of thinking maybe Josh Matthews is the way to go because they need more current references. If you're selling your product to kids... Have kids know who the hell you're talking about. The Fandango R Truth match. Uh, Fandango leaves. R Truth wins because of count out. One star. It was a waste. All the extra stuff. There's no wrestling on the show. They keep promoing Brock, but they're not showing him wrestling. They're showing him enter the WWE building in Stanford, Connecticut over and over and over again. Leading up to, I guess he's going to trash Triple H's office. Ryback rules. Ryback rules. Okay, fine. You wanted to start the Fandango craze. Now you want to try to start the Ryback rules craze. I got a couple other hashtags for you. How about this? How about Ryback drools? Ryback pools? Ryback stools? Feed him less. Match number three, ADR versus Ziggler. Actually, this ended up turning out probably my favorite match of the night. Um, it was old hat to see the two guys go back and forth. We've seen ADR and Ziggler a ton of times. Um, it was competent. There were looked like a couple botches, but they played it off well. Um, Zeb Coulter makes a reference to say, I think ADR has an advantage in the ladder match because ADR uses ladders, which is definitely veiled racism. I basically, he's like, I'm going to leave it alone. But I mean, I know what he's saying. He's saying he used the ladder to hop over a wall to get into America. It's racist, WWE. Get over it. The ending was Bedlam, and I'm actually thinking this is what's going to make the match good, because it's not necessarily the three guys in the ring, but with AJ and Biggie Langston and Ricardo Rodriguez and Zeb Coulter all around, it got more entertaining. It was crazy. Everybody's flying all over the place. All these extra peeps, this match at Extreme Rules has a chance to be really good. Three stars for ADR versus Ziggler. WWE is joining forces with Yahoo, which is great, because apparently this summer we're going to need an extra 30 minutes of wrestling, 
And I use the term with the air quotes because we don't see wrestling on the show anymore. It's all soap opera. And the very next segment after the Yahoo segment was Caitlin worrying about who her secret admirer is. No, we haven't seen Cody Rhodes in a few weeks. Maybe it is him. They did start that, but it, it's all soap opery. And the only thing soapy I want to see about that is the Bella Twins in a bathtub. Match number four pits the Shield versus the Usos and Kofi. Hey, maybe the guys who never win matches might actually beat the Shield, who've never lost a match. Yeah, right. What, was 3MB busy tonight? Kofi's such an exciting wrestler. I mean, he gets the crowd amped up. He, the moves he throws together are ridiculous. They need somebody for him to wrestle um, or make him win matches. Why does he always lose? I love Dean Ambrose's finishing move, the face-first DDT. Sick. I give the match three stars. I love the Shield. And you know what? I, I'm going to say just because it was different opponents and the Usos and Kofi got some screen time, the match lasted for a while and there was uh, some good uh, back and forth between all six of these guys. Uh, I give the match three stars. Uh, and I'm probably only giving it three because the other matches suck so bad that this one looked great in comparison. There's an, a mention to the comparison of the Shield being a powerful stable and mentioning like uh, the Freebirds and the Four Horsemen and their legacy of being dominant, stable. Um, they must be watching our Taupout show because that's all we've been talking about for the last two weeks. If you haven't seen it yet, check out the links over here somewhere on this screen and click over to see our uh, two episodes, one about DX and one about Heart Foundation. And stay tuned uh, for this week. We're going to do one about the NWO and the Four Horsemen. Match number five, Antonio Cesaro versus Zack Ryder. Wow, what an exciting show. I give the match two stars. Um, Ryder jobbing as usual. Uh, it was too short. Uh, they showed a, a highlight from main event where Cesaro from the second rope suplexes Kofi into the ring. Again, another reason why Kofi's ridiculous. And Cesaro's ridiculous. They're great wrestlers. And yet, they're getting uh, jammed down on the mid-card with no time whatsoever to show off. They're great. Put these guys up. You know, at the end, uh, Cesaro ripped off one of Kofi's dreadlocks or extensions. Um, it's ridiculous. What's Kofi going to do to get back at Cesaro? Rip off his treasure trail? <gasps> oh, he talked about his treasure trail. Ugh. The Heyman footage was sloppy and stupid. This is what we've been waiting for the entire show, just to see some shaky cell phone footage of him walking through WWE headquarters and ragging on Andre the Giant and uh, smashing uh, Triple H's office with a sledgehammer. It was it was doofy. It's funny because he's walking through the hallway and Brock and looks at the uh, um, Royal Rumble poster with the rock on it. So. Sorry, Brock stopped and looked at the poster. So we could be seeing a Rock Brock preview if Rock ever heals from his injuries from wrestling. Triple H was really good. Um, he got in the ring and he really got the crowd. The crowd loved seeing him, so that helped him out. But, uh, you know, he's good at what he does on the mic. I still have my doubts about this match coming up at Extreme Rules. Match number six, AJ and the Bellas versus Caitlin and the Funkadactyls. Half a star. Never given a match a half a star. Half a star. I love the Bellas. They didn't even get involved. The whole match was basically the weakest of the all the wrestlers. AJ versus Cameron, and Caitlin came in and pinned AJ after the Bellas bailed. Mark Henry, good for you. Calling out the audience, going off script, and he got them repeating the what, 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 and then he called them puppets. I'm actually starting to like Mark Henry, finally, after 15 years. Sheamus and Barrett have a match. Um, this uh, match, you know, it could be better. Uh, but both these guys are going through their move sets. Um, it, it, there wasn't a lot of continuity. Uh, Barrett going into the bull hammer into white noise looks so sloppy and so stunted. Barrett should have won this match. I give it two and a half stars. Could have been better. Um, you know, I, I, I just hate the Sheamus. And it was good afterwards. And that's the extra half a star. When Mark Henry uh, got psyched out by Sheamus pretending to throw Barrett, he gets... Uh, 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 bro kicked in the face and then Mark Henry takes the trainer's belt and he whips him with it so it's going to be extreme this also has quite good potential to be one of those matches uh, that's quite memorable for the upcoming Extreme Rules pay-per-view finally match number 8 pits uh, Ryback versus Kane um, it was predictable uh, I hate to give it a half a star as, as much as the AJ's and Bella's so I'll give it one star Ryback could not pick up Kane for the shell shot. Kane was already sitting on the top rope, and he put him up in that and got him. After the match, the shield comes down. Daniel Bryan comes down. There's a little scuffle, and Ryback comes in with a chair 
and rails out Cena. He doesn't pick him up. He doesn't get the shell shock. He hits him one time with a chair, and that's how we end Raw. Um, again, less than stellar. Not one of my favorite episodes of Raw. They've got to pick it up uh, by next week to get me ready to go throw down 60 bucks to rent Extreme Rules. For the Raw Recap, I'm Big Pop. We'll see you next time.